Now we're back with the code editor for the user case 2 where we work with land surface temperature data. So again, first we have to load the land surface temperature data set and for this we uh, need the ID of the data set. In order to find the ID for a specific data set, you can search it in the uh, data catalog where in the search the keyword with the associate, uh, associated with the image collection will uh, bring the results uh, and this can be just copied. So here you can see that instead of using uh, an image uh, similar to previous example, here we are using an image collection. And basically an image collection is a stack of homogeneous rasters. In this case, land surface temperature rasters. And the good thing about image collection that it can be uh, used fully or it can be filtered for a specific time or location. Here you already see the uh, time constraints. So in this case, we are interested for the time series from 2001 to 2018 and also for specific date range. So if you are interested for time series only for specific months or for specific season, it can be filtered in a following way by filtering the day of the year. We can also run the filters uh, for specific space. So if we are interested only in a small area, we can use either the geometries which are uploaded in our asset, or we can use the uh, geometry tools and uh, select a specific area. So just having a point or polygon, and we can add the So let's print the collection now in order to gain some information about it. So we can see in the console the information about image collection. We have 126 features uh, which resulted in after filtering the data by time and location. And we can see each and every image which uh, that are in this collection and we can see the information about the bands. So for example, the daytime land surface temperature or nighttime land surface temperature, as well as some properties. Here an important thing is the time start property, which basically has the information regarding the um, observation time, which is very important for time series analysis. Okay, now let's move forward. So here we can see um, the function which is needed in order to convert the land surface temperature information provided from MODIS uh, to first to Kelvin and then convert Kelvin to Celsius. So in order to do so, first we have to multiply it by scaling factor. And the information about the scaling factor can be also found in the uh, data description. So if we move back, we can see here that several bands have scaling factor that should be used. So this is from where the scaling factor comes. And then conversion to Celsius is just a simple subtraction. Um, here, an important thing is to retain all the properties regarding the time uh, for uh, in order to use uh, later the time series information uh, for our analysis. And when we have the function ready, uh, what we have to do is to map the function uh, in order to have it applied to every image in the image collection. As a result, we have a new image collection, the collection Celsius, which has the same information uh, already, uh, but the images uh, are now in, the values are represented in Celsius. So in order to visualize uh, the imagery, we can either select the specific image from the collection, uh, either using the ID uh, or, the, uh, or the name or the ID, or we can also use some statistics or the reducers for the analysis. Uh, so, so here uh, we can see the land surface temperature um, collection where we select only the daytime uh, band and apply statistics. It can be maximum or mean or um, or another uh, statistics or minimum. So let's just change. And we use uh, specific um, simple 
visualization from green to red just to have the um, uh, visualization if we run this uh, let's take this off uh, we will see the map representing in this case the max temp maximum temperature and we can use the inspector tool again in order to get some of the values and an overview and over different areas and here already if we change a bit the transparency we can already observe the patterns that in urban green areas the temperature is much lower than in build up areas Again, as mentioned, this function can be changed. So in, let's uh, change and run it again. And here again, we will see the instant change of values. So as it's the mean values, the values are lower, but still we can see the patterns uh, between the differences of build up areas and more green areas. Okay, but this was the visualization of the reducer. So uh, over so for the time step but we can see it as one value in order to see the temporal variability it's very useful to plot it so here for that we will use chart image series uh, function for specific band again we are selecting the band uh, for daytime and uh, land surface temperature for specific location and again for uh, using the specific function uh, here we are using the maximum function, but again later we can also change to min minimum or mean value. So let's um, print the plot. So in the console we can see the average over the whole uh, area of interest uh, over time. So we can see the patterns, we can see some time steps when the temperatures were much higher. But what we can do is in order, uh, not um, average it over the whole area, but select a smaller uh, location, so a point location, and look at the time series for this point. And let's just change the name into area of interest. And do not forget to change it also in the script. And let's run it again. So now we can see the plot for um, for this specific area of interest, and of course we can um, easily change the location and run it again to see the changes in the pattern. So again, instantly we can see that over time the temperatures are much lower uh, compared to more build-up areas. So with this, you can experiment more and select the different bands. For example, observe the uh, different patterns of nighttime land surface temperature. And also you can look at, uh, look at the different statistics. But with this, uh, we would uh, wrap up the user case 2 and then move with the user case 3.